And the judge in Donald Trump's New York criminal case has found the former president in contempt again for violating his gag order. He is now threatening Trump with jail time for his continued behavior. Basically, I have to watch every word I tell you people. You ask me a question, a simple question, I'd like to give it, but I can't talk about it because this judge has given me a gag order and said you'll go to jail if you violate it. And frankly, you know what? Our Constitution is much more important than jail. It's not even close. All right, let's bring in CBS News campaign reporter and attorney Katrina Kaufman. Hey, Katrina, good to see you. I know you've been reporting at the courtroom all day. Um, so former President Trump has been held in contempt again for violating this gag order. This is the 10th time. Um, what is the president saying about this? Hi, Caitlin. Good to be with you. So what Trump said in this instance is he criticized the jury. He was on a, he was doing a television show interview and he complained that the jury was picked too fast, that it's 95 percent democratic, and he said that this is an unfair process. When we had the hearing on this gag order violation last week, or a few others as well, you could tell that this was the one that really perturbed the judge because he is very concerned about the safety of this jury. He wants them to not feel under threat, not worry about their loved ones as this trial continues, and he wants to protect the legitimacy of this process. So he found Trump in violation again with the $1,000 fine, which as a reminder is the maximum financial penalty he can give for this. And the only other option is jail time. He could give Trump up to 30 days in jail and he has now said that this is very much on the table. He sees that $1,000 fines are not enough of a deterrent. And so if the prosecution asks and this continues, it seems very real that Trump could receive jail time for future gag order violations. It's significant for those on the jury, especially since this is such a high-profile case here. Um, you mentioned the judge, Juan Merchant. He has warned of further violations could come. Um, we're also hearing that the Secret Service have been planning for a possible potential imprisonment. What would that actually look like? So, of course, the Secret Service is not sharing their plans, but we know some things that could potentially Happen. And the judge actually said he was concerned about the Secret Service in this instance. But mm. it's said that there would likely be a rotation of Secret Service officers. Trump would be isolated. There's a possibility that he could be put somewhere like Rikers, where apparently there is a facility that could accommodate him, seek the Secret Service, and there wouldn't be other inmates around. There's also apparently a cell that's behind the courtroom where this trial is happening. So Potentially, the judge could maybe as sort of a jail teaser give Trump a bit of a time out there, and he would, of course, have Secret Service protection in place. Um, it's also been said that they would be doing things like screening his food and personal items to, of course, make sure that the former president remains protected, even if confined in jail. And like all things and many of Trump's legal problems, this is really uncharted territory. No state or federal prison system has ever had to deal with this before. Yeah, I mean, we just use the uh, the term unprecedented every day in this trial. That's certainly the case for that description there. Um, I want to ask a little bit about what happened today, Katrina, because you had the former uh, Trump Organization controller, essentially the accountant Jeffrey McConney, was called to testify today. Um, what did we learn from his testimony? So Jeff McConney was important for finally bringing in the falsification, self -falsification of business records aspect of this case, because actually this is the first day we have heard about that. And mm. Trump is in fact charged with 34 counts of falsification of business records. But until now, we had really heard about the larger scheme at play here, the catch and kill scheme that the prosecution has been laying out, where Trump, David Pecker, and his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, were trying to suppress damaging stories, the alleged payoffs to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal, but Jeff McConney finally brought in how this was dealt with at the Trump Organization and these paybacks to Michael Cohen. In particular, he brought up a conversation he had with Alan Weisselberg, the former chief financial officer at the Trump Organization, and he talked about how he basically threw a pad at him, told him to take notes, and laid out how they were going to pay back Michael Cohen, and most importantly, how it was going to come out of Donald Trump's personal bank account and how these checks were signed by Donald Trump at the White House as well.
All right, some juicy information there. Katrina Kaufman, thank you very much for covering this for us. We appreciate it.